восемь, три, девять, один, два, восемь, три, девять, один, два, ноль, ноль, восемь, ноль, один, ноль, ноль, восемь, ноль, один, dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 11 oktober 2015. Dat is het bulletin van zondag. Deze uitzending is voor een flink deel in het Engels, maar er zijn enkele korte berichten vooraf die misschien toch iets langer zijn. PI2 NOS en PI3 UTR hebben sinds gisteren elk een ontvanger erbij in de plaats Kampen. De ontvangers staan opgesteld op of in de kerktoren. En het is de eerste locatie waarbij PI2 NON CQ Coversity en PI2 NOS CQ PI3 UTR gelijk optrekken door van dezelfde plek gebruik te maken. Er is voor de nieuwe ontvanger geen CTCSS nodig. Op hobbyschool.nl is een, een nieuw artikel een hoop te vinden over de repeaters. Eén onderwerp licht ik daar nog wat verder van uit, de aanpak van intruders op de repeatersystemen. Zoals bekend wordt bij de bovenregionale repeaters actief tegen intruders opgetreden. In een recent overleg met agentschap Telecom heeft de relaisgroep een gezamenlijke aanpak besproken. De relaisgroep meldt daarbij dat er sprake is van een constructieve samenwerking. De actieve pijlgroep waar Daily Minutes al eerder over berichten blijft zich daarbij inzetten om in kaart te brengen waar het ongeëigende gebruik, of dat nu mensen met of zonder machtiging betreft, vandaan komt. Op basis daarvan wordt dan besloten welke aanpak de beste is. Dat die aanpak werkt blijkt ook uit eerdere gevallen waarover op PI2 NOS is gepubliceerd. Bij vermoeden van een vergissing, zoals een onbedoelde draaggolf bijvoorbeeld door een stapel boeken op de microfoon, zal het team doorgaans zelf in actie komen. Bij opzet is dat agentschap Telecom. Wil je meespeuren naar intruders op de repeater, dan kan dat met een speciaal daarvoor gemaakte app van PH7WIM. Meer info hierover is ook te vinden op hobbyscope.nl waarbij je scope schrijft met een C. Vanochtend was er helaas geen uitzending. Ik had vanochtend nog wat last van de op zich onschuldige gezondheidsproblemen waar ik al een paar weken door geplaagd word. En ik ben vervolgens in slaap gevallen tot kwart voor twaalf. Ik heb erg goed geslapen overigens. Aan het eind van deze uitzending is er nog een kort stukje MFSK 31 rond 1000 hertz. En daarna het Mosse woord. We gaan nu verder in het Engels. Daily Minutes of Sunday, October 11, 2015. This is Peter John of Emergency Radio. We have several items of international news for you. And for the first time since long, at the end of the show, we have some MFSK 31. Centered around 1000 Hz. MFSK 31 around 1000 Hz. We might do some more data in the next couple of days at the end of our Dutch language bulletins. From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is ARRL Audio News. In this week's satellite update, in what might have been record speed, AMSAT's new Fox 1A satellite received its Oscar designation on the day of its launch, and its FM transponder was activated temporarily on October 9th. AMSAT Oscar number administrator Bill Tynan, W3XO, announced that Fox 1A is now AO85. The satellite launched on October 8th at 1249 UTC. This is amateur radio satellite Fox 1. I have been informed of the successful launch today, October 8, 2015, of the AMSAT North America built Fox 1A CubeSat. I am also informed that the satellite has been heard by several amateurs in various countries, Tynan said in a news release. This successful launch comes after years of diligent and dedicated work on the part of AMSAT North America volunteers, including Tony Montero, AA2TX, who became a silent key in March 2014. It was Tony who spearheaded and guided the work on all AMSAT North America CubeSats until his untimely passing. Thus, it is only fitting that this spacecraft be dedicated to his memory. As Tynan noted, Jerry Buxton, N0JY, took over Montero's post of AMSAT North America Vice President for Engineering and successfully completed the project through its preparation for launch. All of those who had a part in designing, constructing, and testing FOX 1A and its various subsystems are to be congratulated for jobs well done, Tynan said. Telemetry and a distinctive voice ID from the new CubeSat have been heard around the world, and satellite aficionados in the U.S., such as Clayton Coleman, W5PFG, wasted no time in making QSOs during a transponder testing phase in the early morning hours of October 9th. Good morning. 
Fox 1A telemetry reports, raw and decoded, are now available on the AMSAT website. The Fox Telem software is available via the AMSAT website as well. This was a great day for AMSAT and for satellite operators around the world, Patrick Stoddard, WD9EWK, posted to the AMSAT reflector. Almost six years to the day the AMSAT Fox project was unveiled at the 2009 AMSAT Space Symposium in Baltimore, we now have the first of a series of Fox 1 satellites in orbit. Congratulations to all who have had a hand in building and launching Fox 1A today, and thanks to everyone who has supported the Fox project over the past six years. AMSAT has produced a free commemorative issue of the AMSAT Journal that highlights the Fox 1A launch success, which is available at amsat.org. Hello, this is Bob McCready, G0FGX, with the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS News from the Radio Society of Great Britain. Ofcom has agreed that full license holders, including those with club or reciprocal licenses, may continue to have temporary access to 146 to 147 megahertz for a further 12 months when the existing NOVs expire on the 31st of October. A new NOV must be applied for via the RSGB website. One change on the new NOV is that the exclusion of certain NGR squares is no longer an explicit restriction. Details on the latest 2015-2016 version can be found on the RSGB website. Het is voor Alfa 0 Echo Tango Echo. Volg nu eerst een seconde of twaalf aan data. Maar schakel niet af. Daarna komt het morse woord, twee maal, twee woorden. En vervolgens het laatste deel van de Lincolnshire Poacher. Christine Large. Number stations were evolved as a result of suspicions about intercepted traffic. The security services were looking for better ways of disguising the content of their message and protecting their agents. Some people thought that their use had tailed off, but it certainly in recent years has grown dramatically. There are many more groups of fragmented users in different countries. <laughs> I think that people who listen in to the Lincolnshire Poacher regularly have established that he's probably not based in Lincolnshire. In fact, at a pretty good guess, it's in some area of Cyprus. And the assumption that the Lincolnshire Poacher is one of ours has certainly been made, but it won't be by me. Six, six, four, seven, five. Six, six. A certain part of our secret intelligence services does run one of these stations. I won't say why, or give the schedules, but they certainly do. A lot of people have got radio direction finding facilities now. You can actually purchase them for the high frequency bands, and you'll get a line of transmission. The radio transmitter concern was tracked down to an area in Cyprus in the Mediterranean. Cyprus transmitters or not, the poacher's real identity remains, officially at least, a secret. Is he really one of ours? And come to that, who is the Spanish lady? And does she dance to the tune of MI6 or the CIA? Richard Norton Taylor. Classic spook policy is called NCND, i.e. neither confirm nor deny. The most, in a way, frustrating thing, especially for those people who just want to twiddle the knob and hear these things and then get sort of fascinated by it because it's there and it becomes a kind of mystery and they can't crack it, never will be able to crack it, actually. The people behind it are never, ever going to admit to it. These stations, they shout at you. Akin Fernandez. They draw attention to themselves. They say, look at me, listen to me. I'm not the sort of person who can just sit down come across something like number stations which is completely 
counterintuitive and just let it slide by. Are we owed an explanation? I definitely think so. Two, two, five, one. They are indeed used by the intelligence services of particular governments anywhere in the world. Former operative of the Foreign Office's Diplomatic Wireless Service, David White. Some of these transmissions are a hoax, but the great majority of them are genuine and serve a useful purpose to whoever is transmitting them. There are many, many places where there are insurgents that cause great difficulties to the authorities. These are often the ones that are transmitting the number stations, reading out the numbers to different units. But others are quite legitimate of any particular government secret intelligence service. It does appear that there's more to this than just the shipping news from Dogger or German Bite. All we can do is listen and wonder. But for now, goodbye. Or zero 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 three nine seven one five six six four seven five one nine two seven four nine two zero zero two eight vier null fünf eins zwei sieben vier Neun, sieben. Achtung alle Mitarbeiter der Nachrichtendienste. Bitte beachten Sie Freitagabends die Sendungen PA00 News für die wichtigsten weitere Informationen. Ich brauche auch von Echo Tingo Echo.